Ciao, this is Esther. Alfred here. Of you, me, and Sicily. Welcome back to our channel, or if you're new around here, welcome to you, me, and Sicily. We're two expats living just outside of Catania, and we come to you weekly to talk about all things Sicilian, right, Alfred? It's a great day today. Beautiful day. It's about 74 degrees, sunny. They're picking the olives right in front of us. God is good. Late harvest this year, right? Yeah, October. And so across Sicily right now, they're harvesting. And we were so lucky right in front of our deck where we usually broadcast for you. They were picking the olives. So what did I do? I went down there and got you this video. Check it out. Okay. So you know what they're doing here? They're picking the olives right outside of our house. This is the olive tree that you see. We show you often from our deck. And this is called Olive Reale, black olives. And he told me he's going to be using them to make olive oil. And it's best to use these olives ASAP or else they go bad. And it's really important to make sure that you get the olives off the ground as fast as possible or else they can get diseased and so forth. So there you go, it's raining olives. <laughs> right outside of our house here in Achicatena. And now look at this view. I think he's got about a hundred trees, all going to be made to for olive oil. And there's Achitreza down below. Look how big these olives are. Of course, I come back on the deck and he changes positions. Now you can get a little bit of a better look at how he's doing it. One branch at a time. All right, Al, let's talk about olive oil, okay? Everyone wants to know about olive oil. And we went down there, obviously, they were picking uh, the olives by hand and then very quickly gathering them and putting them into those uh, containers. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to do with them now? Well, the first thing they get to do is they're going to, the ones that they picked by hand, they get to press those. They probably were pressed last night. They bring them to the old officio. That's a, a central processing place who crushes everything. And that's your first press extra virgin oil. Now, the rest of the ones, they'll come back here today and they'll pick up the other ones. They'll bounce on the ground. They, they put these big mats down and they, as you'll mm -hmm. see, they bounce on the ground. Uh, that's a little bit of a double-edged sword when they bounce because when they bounce, they get bruised. The uh, olives get bruised. And uh, when they get bruised, moisture goes into the olives, which gives it a little bit of a bitter taste. But if they're picked up right away, I guess it's, I guess it's okay. From what the reports that I was reading yesterday online, is that it's going to be a banner year mm -hmm. for the harvest of olives this year. Yeah. So that's a good thing. We'll see how they taste, though. Uh, they were picking them, too, in uh, Castelvetrano, our friend Tommaso Asado. I saw uh, his girlfriend with a big basket of beautiful Castelvetrano olives. But really, across the island, there's all types of varietals, right? Yeah, we just have to hope that it doesn't rain uh, too hard to interfere with the uh, picking because you don't want too much water in the, uh, in the uh, olives right now. Right now, the trees are full. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that these guys, these men and women, the pickers and so forth, uh, pick them real quick. And that's it. You know, They spent about two to three hours going through each one of these trees and working very quickly to gather them up and take them to the oleficio. So what's the first step when it arrives to the oleficio? They're washed. And they're, they're washed and their little branches are taken off. That's step one. Then they go down a conveyor belt. And the entire olive mm -hmm. is crushed, skin, pit, everything. And it's crushed, and it looks like wet cardboard. By the time that step is done, it looks, it looks like wet cardboard. Then it continues down the conveyor belt, and that stuff that looks like wet cardboard is put under a hydraulic press, and it's squeezed. Mm -hmm. squeeze 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 like you can't believe and what comes out is the the olive oil and then the other stuff the stuff that's left over the residue is also has uses believe it or not and it's used for other stuff uh, some plants even use it to you know heat and to run electricity for their stuff but what happens with the oil it then put into uh, big tanks to settle and you've got two different types of uh, one type of oil 
you see right now it's all unfiltered okay mm -hmm. so at some point in time they'll some people want to filter it some people don't want to filter it some people want to put stuff in like basil or red hot pepper or something like that to make uh infused oils yeah but it's all done there so the how long can an olive oil last before you have to throw it out uh until it gets rancid mm -hmm. what happens is if you if you should be stored in a cool and dark place, okay? If you do it that way, you're not going to have any problems at all for a year, year or even two years. What happens to oil that's not opened it, is it doesn't get rancid like that. Uh, the older oil will get uh, taste less intense. Over time, the intensity goes away. Mm -hmm. uh, what you have to watch out for this year are the delivery problems in the States because it's the cargo contain containers, as you, we've all been reading about, are all backed up. So that means that these guys, which are typically shipped, say, mid-November, early December, the crop, uh, they, may, they may be hung up in, um, you know, in port there yeah. uh, for extra longer time this year, except for those guys that have their own uh, distribution thing all set up because there are certain uh, companies that they go direct to a different port, not California or wherever. Uh, from what I understand, Florida is open right now, so there's, there isn't any problem. So I, I have a, suspect, a suspicion that some of these big producers are going to divert and go uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, Florida, unload it there, yeah. and then truck it. Or else they can go through the Panama Canal if they want to, but I don't think that's a good idea. Now, Al, we've talked about this before, but give people a little bit of advice when buying olive oil, because it can be said on the label made in Italy or made from Sicily, but it may not actually be all 100% Sicilian or Italian olives. First of all, it has to see, say imported from Italy, okay? It has to have, to have the EU signature because basically that's it. They have to put down where the olives come from, okay? So if mm -hmm. they put down 100% Mediterranean olives, that means that that can come from any place, Spain, Greece, Italy, etc which are good oil. There's nothing wrong with Spanish oil, believe me, uh, but it's not Italian oil. Uh, if it's from Sicily, typically guys like Asado and some of these other guys, Barbera, they put down, you know, 100% Sicilian oil. Now you've got olive oil that's made from only one different type of oil. That's called a mono varietal. Or then you have others that are blended. Now here's the problem that you have to watch out for is that certain producers will take their leftover oil from, say, for example, 2020 or 2021, and their whatever's left over in their tanks, and that first batch that goes out is blended with the new oil, so they don't have any extra inventory. So how can people know the difference? Look at the price. Okay, the cheaper mm -hmm. the oil that's at the market right now, because an olive is a commodity, mm -hmm. OK, in other words, there's a spot price for that every day on the markets. They know much, you know, how much an, uh, a ton of oil of olives cost. If it's a giveaway price, you're neither not getting oil, olive oil, or you're getting old oil. So, you know, if you got to have oil and again, what are you going to use the oil for? Not all oil should be used as frying oil for mm -hmm. sure. If it's a finishing oil, spend a few extra bucks use less oil. I mean, it's mm -hmm. simple as that, just my opinion. Now, we did an entire episode on asado olive uh, yeah. oil over there in Castel Vetrano. I'll leave you a link. And also the Barbera. Now, Barbera also uses some uh, olives from other countries, right? Not Well, no, they don't. What they use is other countries. Yeah, I mean, here's what the story is. They use the sand oil. His, mm -hmm. his uh, Lorenzo wine is just great, mm -hmm. okay? That's number one. Then he'll supplement for the bigger companies oil from Apulia, which actually is the largest producer of olives in all of Italy, which mm -hmm. is over on the Adriatic coast. Great products, okay? And that's another, that's an Italian oil now. So that's not really a Sicilian oil, but yeah. what the heck, why I want an Italian oil, you kidding me? <laughs> and then for the discounters, all right, or say the grocery stores, even here in Italy, uh, it'll say this is 100% olives from the EU countries. And they'll, they'll list the EU country. So depending on who the client is. But generally speaking, Barbera and uh, also Asaro, that is what you're getting in the States. Is usually it's the singing oil. And I can recommend both companies. Both companies do a great job. They're available any Two great to, fam yeah. families and as by well. By the way, we don't get paid from either. <laughs> We don't get paid from either, <laughs> either company. Well, they're just, they're just friends of ours. Because yeah. we 
support right. the local um, businesses Correct. here. Remember when we went to Asados and one of the steps that was so interesting. Uh, so he was going through and explaining to us all the steps of making uh, the olive oil and the certain processes that went into it. And he stopped in one place and took a plastic uh, bottle and put in this green gooey uh, uh, thing from the olive oil producing. And he said, you know what? Companies pay a lot of money. Beauty companies pay a lot of money for this because it's used in some beauty products. So sure enough, I brought it home, tried it, put it on my face, put it on my hair. It smelled a little bit, but this byproduct they use for a beauty uh, things. Oh, but I still suggest, yes. I still, yeah. you know, if you find a cheap olive oil somewhere, I suggest that you put it on your face or your hair. It's not just for food. It's really good also um, as a moisturizer. A half a cup of olive oil, even old oil, and a half a cup of sugar mixed together makes a terrific exfoliant. And there yeah. are many Pro, there are many, many, many uses from creams, et cetera. She's saying candles nowadays are made, are soaps. Olive oil soap is terrific. Yeah. Okay. So there, there are a lot of products uh, that you can buy that have, it doesn't have to be extra virgin oil uh, in it. Okay. I mean, it can be just olive oil. There's nothing wrong with olive oil. Yeah. Okay. Matter of fact, my mom used to use oil. She got Philip, this brand called Filippo Berrio. And we all thought it was an Italian oil, but really those those olives came from Spain, Greece, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, with the, with the, and so, you know, if once you find an oil, you like it, stick with it. Yeah. That's all I can, that's my best advice. To the you. other fun thing. So we were driving around looking for little snippets to show you guys during the broadcast. And all of a sudden, Alfred stops the car and I look up and there's a herd of goats running around. So what did I do? Jumped out of the car, went up there and got this little video. Check it out. So this morning I decided to climb up this hill to show you these goats grazing away. Look at them watching me. And look at this view. This is just outside of our home. And this is the hill I climbed. <laughs> Alfred's waiting for me down there. But there you go. Quintessential Sicily. Boy, Al, your timing was pretty darn good. You know, let me tell you something about goats, okay? Besides them making great cheese mm -hmm. and besides them tasting pretty good when you cook them, you know what they're using them for what? here in Sicily? And they also began to use them in uh, California is for brush control to prevent uh, these big wildfires. They'll, what they'll do is farmers have huge herds or big herds and they'll come up to your property, ask you if you want them to eat the mm -hmm. undergrowth. They'll put a fence around it, and then they'll spend a day or two there eating all your undergrowth. <laughs> they'll put on trucks, and they move uh, to another location. It's highly effective. Yeah. Not effective, highly effective. And I talked about this several weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. And California is starting to do that. Goats. So you talk about the original organic, you know, zero kilometer sustainable thing <laughs> a goat who would have known but wasn't that cool all That's right a great idea all right the other big thing is antonio bandanas and harrison ford are in castel mare del golfo we have friends over there right now and you know my friend uh damiano he's like a lot of things are closed off to the public and a lot of new crew members are there so a lot of excitement and he was also telling me that Castellamare del Golfo is now a destination spot for a lot of filmmakers, not just from the United States, but also Italian filmmakers. And I've always told you guys, Castellamare del Golfo is one of my favorite places. Um, so that's a great piece of news there. I think it's a terrific thing. I know you and I were asked to be in the movies, right? Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't. Uh, well, we have our own movie. It's called, I wonder, I wonder huh? why people won't. I wonder why people won't uh, let us uh, be in these movies. But in any case... Uh, You'd be an extra? Would you want to be Francis an extra? Francis Ford Coppola or anybody who's listening today, uh, we're available. We charge like five euro an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you work for five euro an hour? What? I, I would be in a movie with uh, Antonio... What's his last Sanderis. name? 
he's always been one of my favorite actors. Really? I th- oh, Spanish. yeah, I think he's a great. What was that movie that he did with uh, him playing with the gun? Desperado. Desperado, that was good. Great flick. Anyway, Harrison Ford, Antonio Banderas, and some other stars, Indiana Jones 5. So the How other thing, is Harrison huh? Ford? I think he's in his 80s or something like so that. So what are they going to do with him? him? I mean, how, him. What are they going to bring him out in a wheelbarrow or something? No, he's understand. got an extra. Oh, okay. He's got an extra. He's are you years kidding old. me Holy right now? Smokers. He's got an extra. The other thing is, you know, uh, the roasted me. chestnut. We've featured this guy a million times, right? Ooh. The ro- a roasted chestnut guy. He's such a cool character. So the other day I was over there and uh, went to get some chestnuts with uh, Jimmy. So we were over there with the chestnut guy. And I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I should ask him to talk in a little bit of Sicilian because he's talking so fast. And to other people, he's talking Sicilian. To me, of course, he's speaking in Italian. So this is what he said. Check it out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's a little Sicilian for you. In Siciliano. Repetto? Sì. Oh, the chestnuts were pretty good, weren't they? Do you like the Edna Maroni or do you like the, okay, okay it's, not, let me answer your it's question, a little okay. bit early. Are you saying it's Frankly, a I've had the Maronis. They're big and they're chewy and delicious. And I mm-hmm. had a guy's chestnuts so far this week because they're just coming out. Yeah. They're not as flavorful as... They just will nice be later. Not, yeah, if I yeah. just wait um, a minute or a few, maybe a few weeks, the chestnuts here, though, are nothing like the chestnuts in the States. Honestly, the ones you buy in the market, they're about six, seven euro a kilo. So that's what, four bucks maybe euro. a pound? 12, 12, yeah. euro, so 12 six, euro kilo. So s- 12 euro kilo right now. So the yeah. price will go down, down yeah. uh, once they come. They're high in uh, potassium. potassium okay? I need potassium for my diet for some yeah. bizarre reason. So I like to eat them. Uh, there are a variety of ways to eat them, whether you boil them or, or whether you them. roast them. We prefer to roast them. But, but I You also know like the guy ro- was telling me that them. his son is in Rome right now and yeah. he was <laughs> buying the chestnuts. And they, you know, in Rome, what they do is they put it in a cone. Yeah. And it's like, six chestnuts for five euro and so his son was reporting back he's like you got to come uh to rome and start roasting them there you make a killing let me tell They're you something. Expensive the ones in there rome are the most delicious ones i've ever had really those are like a high variety they have some at the bottom of the spanish steps right yeah the guy and over there roasting them and then he puts them in they, a paper cone right and and they're about five euro when you get more than six chestnuts you get maybe ten and believe me they that's all you need okay because they're so delicious but chestnuts of course can be used for a variety of different things other than uh just you know munching on them and by the way her and i were having a discussion about this jimmy brought us some uh, roasted uh, uh hazelnuts from tindery mm-hmm. okay they are just as healthy for you a good nut chestnuts yeah. hazelnuts. hazelnuts they're shocked in in their uh, roasted and of course, she's been eating all week. We got a big bag of uh, pistachios, pistachio from, from Bronte. Bronte. So that's one of the staples in our diet is having good, healthy type of uh, nuts. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, she gets a little nutty. So what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm serious. The real This is a good time good. to eat this stuff right they, now. Yeah, the uh, pistachios are very different than any pistachios I've had in the States. That's for sure. The other thing is the artichokes. We finally had um, artichokes. They were three for five euro, which is kind of expensive right now. It's a dollar fifty each. Yeah, but usually they're, you know, a little bit more, three for five dollars. But usually five euro, excuse me, usually they're like a euro 20 or something like that. Stuff with the, uh, the way I like them is with the parsley, with the garlic and drizzled with olive oil yeah, and yeah. lemon. That's the way I like it. How do you guys like your artichokes? Leave me a comment on uh, the comments here these, below. These are all the things that now come in uh, fall foods. I'm waiting now for the uh, broccoli, the, 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 the bacalao and the stalker that they're yeah. just starting to sell that. And uh, Esther makes great. She learned how to make stalker, no bacalao. And uh, I'll be, yeah, I'll be eating that on 
usually on Fridays, she'll make a big bucket up, a big thing mm -hmm. up, and then we'll put it away. And the other thing that she's going to make too, I guess, next week, because it's getting a little bit chilly, not not a lot of mm -hmm. chilly, a lot of chilly. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's uh, I'm losing the English language. I swear to God, I forget a lot of the English words now. I'm like, da, da, da. but anyway, she'll make a big bucket full and we'll freeze it into portion sizes, yeah. which would be great. Yeah. I love making that. I got the recipe from my friend Stefania. Speaking of Stefania, you guys, we still have uh, Italian conversation classes. If you're interested, uh, send me a little note. I send you um, private, uh, unlisted YouTube videos that you can use at your leisure, at your pace. Uh, and it's just basically Stefania and I going back and forth, me in English, her in Italian, simple conversation words that you can use every day. So for instance, we go to the market, we go shopping. Uh, we also go to the mall and a clothes store. We also go you know, we talk about things like ordering food, ordering coffee, how to ask for a bill. And most importantly, if you're coming to, here to Sicily, things like asking for directions, where's the bus stop? Also, uh, where can I fuel up my um, car? So very, very useful conversation, Italian. If you're interested, send me a note. And I guess uh, our friend Joya Russo is enjoying some Sicilian with uh, Stefania. So that's one of the things that she has uh, to offer as well, is that she's um, helping people speak Sicilian. But I'll tell you what, when you come here, you'll need Italian, not Sicilian. Because Sicilian most people dialect. here, excuse yeah. me, because most people here uh, use Italian, of course, with you know, having a little bit of fun with our chestnut guy, he'll speak a little bit of Sicilian. But even I went up to Via Grande I had to talk to some of those guys roasting the food and they're like, no, I prefer to speak Italian. So some people speak Sicilian. And the other big thing to keep in mind, you guys, is that there's 15,000 dialects of Sicilian. So the Sicilian spoken here in the Catania area is very different than the Sicilian spoken in, let's say, Palermo or the Hinderlands. So keep well, that in really mind. Well, really not 15,000. I mean, well, I like to exaggerate. I learned that's that from you. That's a Hungarian exaggeration. I learned the there, exaggeration there, from you. Honey. There are scores of different dialects, okay? And some of them <laughs> Some of them even have other other uh, nationalities, language thrown in. You go up to uh, Nevada de Sicilia yeah. up in the Brody Mountains, and it's French, okay, because the French With were the up there. So it's a French singing type of a thing. You go someplace else, it's Albanian. I mean, it's like, Albanese. Right, so there are different, different areas. But if you learn some of the basic words, I mean, Sicilian is fun to goof around with but it but esther is completely correct you really can't converse especially with the younger generation although they they, they pick it up uh, although stefania told me that she speaks sicilian to her kids i said Bra -ba. that's great that's yeah, great Bra -ba. listen but before... listen a couple of uh sicilian words for you guys bedu bedda you guys know what that is leave me a comment bedu bedda that was probably the first two words that you taught me well, let me embedded. teach you, let me teach you a word right now. Capaduzzo. Now, this isn't a capaduzzo. This is a capella. But a capaduzzo is the little the little hats that I wore. I did a whole chapter in one of my books mm -hmm. on the Sicilian capaduzzo. That's what they call it. Okay, capello, capello, however they say it in Italian. And since I brought up the books, I might as well tell you. I spoke to my daughter Jen uh, yesterday, and she's made up twenty um, sets of books that she wanted to put on sale now between now and um, Christmas. Great 20, gifts. Yeah, Great 20 gifts. is going to fly out. Uh, they're $19, and you can get my last three books, including one book that has Esther in it, the last <laughs> one. Um, and it's the very good, joy of my heart. If you're interested in the book, simply message Esther, and we'll give you yeah. information on how to do it. And then the last thing I want to talk what about. What about the T-shirts? The t-shirts, I was just going to say that. Youmeandsicily.com. 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 .com. <laughs> and you have inf info there not only for the t-shirts, which, by the way, have been flying out, mm -hmm. uh, but also what tour. We also we have the... Well, wait a sec. Long sleeve t-shirts, male and female yeah, shirts. Yeah, all that stuff. The hats seem to be very yep. popular. And people really like it because uh, and they're embroidered. So that well, I want to see my friend touch. Bill Dixon, my my Irish friend Billy Dixon, who my lifelong friend. I sent him a t-shirt because oh, yeah. I love him. He's a great guy. Now, we, they don't come any more Irish than this guy. And uh, on the condition that he has to wear it. So he's going to wear it and he's going to 
send us a picture and I'm going to post it when I get Billy Dixon's picture. Well, you know what? I'm really interested to see if your brother wears the shirt on the show because I'm going to be on the Sicilian Coroner on Friday. Alfred's brother invited me to be on and I'm going to be very interested to see if Tom Zappala, if you're going to be wearing that T-shirt that we sent you. Tom Zappala, make sure you wear the T-shirt you sent you. Here's what I know. Okay, today, as soon as this program is over, I have my hat on, I have my shirt on, I even have pants on today. I'm going to this market and I'm going to hunt down some uh, lamb. Mm. I have been I have been jonesing for lamb. I mean, we went. Okay, I want to tell a story now. We went out to dinner. Mm -hmm. Our friend uh, Tom and Karen and uh, invited uh, Esther and I out for dinner. In Jimmy, okay? yeah. To Piccolo Mundo in Via Grande. Now, they're noted for their lamb. And all week long, I was just savoring <laughs> the lamb. The nighttime, oh, I was gonna dreaming about that me. mountain he's lamb. He's going to blame me. I could just see him. They were going, bah, bah. And then I was eating them all up. But in any case, we get there, and they have a new menu, and the lamb is there. So I said to Tom, I says, Tom, let's get the lamb. Right as I drool, and as it says, oh, look what they have, Alfred. What was it? Well, that's the thing that you think all de male. Stinko de male is like what that. you always have for Christmas. All it's right. a specialty. What is it? What, it's what a cut pork is it? shoulder. That yeah. every place in the whole United States of Sicily, the whole world, they take it and they make it into they slow cook it. Mm -hmm. There's a nice gravy on it. It's a big chunk of meat, falls off the bone. And I think I had it there one time. So Esther was like, you know, have to stick out the mile. I stick the so anyways. All she, I was thinking is I know that how much you love it and right. why don't but, you have so it? It's a special literally occasion. Browbeat me. Bra a browbeat Alfred Zappala. Into Zappola. having uh, Alf instead of my Wait a second. my story. Alfred Zappala get browbeat. That's so anyways, I don't want to make a scene with Tom and Karen. Yes, I says, okay, I'll have the stinko. I call it stinko the mile. So they they have a new chef there. Mm -hmm. And you know what it was? It was a ham hock. It was like a ham, a but the guy, the guy cooked it. He doesn't, he didn't, he smoked it or some damn thing. <laughs> I felt like I was at a Tex-Mex barbecue and he put some stuff, didn't put gravy on. I don't know what the hell that was. It looked like. It was, I'll tell you what it was. It was the, um, what's his name was telling me, Carmela was telling me he, what he, they did was they took the gravy from the meat and threw in some other uh, vegetables and they pureed it and threw it on. You have to watch out when you come to restaurants because, you know, you have good, simple food and then some idiot yeah. wants to make it better. OK. And That's what happens is, frankly, I didn't I did not enjoy I okay, ate it, me. but blame it was me. basically having like I felt like I was home having a ham coming out of a can. Except blame it was on me. a bone. No, I'm not blaming it. So tonight <laughs> you're having lamb. Having lamb. Uh, you know, you're so right. They try to, you know, make things a little bit cool. Like now they have arancini with all types of fillings. You know, just stick to the Please. regular, the butter, the ragu, and I spinach am gonna go and with you, though. But Next week, we're mm -hmm. going to that Brazilian Catani year. Sicilian, Sicilian Brazilian, Brazilian fusion Ooh, restaurant. We'll, we'll report back to you. That's guys over about on that. Via Etna that has been getting pretty good reviews. It's over by the. Bellini, whatever you call it, that park up there. Okay, Parker Bellini, yeah. we're gonna find it and we're gonna go there. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, Wait share it with a friend. Wait a sec, I'm say. not done either. Oh, okay, and okay. make sure you join our community only members, where you get a little bit of behind the scenes uh, look at some things, some bonus material. It's really just a way of supporting us. So below over here, below this video that you're looking at, there's the subscribe and there's the join. Once you hit the join, it'll take you to where you can support us. $1.99 a month, people, $1.99 a month. And it really helps support this channel. Listen, there's a couple other things. We've changed our format of doing these uh, things. Now, there are two schools of thought. By us pre-recording them and then putting them up, there's a couple of things that happen. The first thing is that we can cut in video. Yeah. So we decided by putting in the video, it kind of makes it into a current events news magazine type thing that she's very experienced at. And I can just throw my two cents in. And, but, but most importantly... There's no, it's not stress. There's no stress because of transmission issues because of Etna or, weather. or the weather. Okay. 
Uh, but the, I am live with you guys yeah, so online, she, right? You know, at six o'clock on Wednesday, at four o'clock on Sunday. That's Sicily time. So we'll be over there in the chats going yeah. back and forth. So if you have any questions, any comments, leave them on the chat. And then after we go premiere live on four o'clock and six o'clock, you can still leave a comment down at the chat. Now that said, okay, I prefer this method because you have no idea how stressful it is trying to produce a program and at the same time hoping that every word that you say people can hear or the picture's or not see. fuzzy, or, or every, we get rained we on. We get rained on, or say, for example, we do a, a big thing that's factually incorrect, which I'm noted to do, uh, yeah. we can fix it. But the most important thing we could do is we can put in nice video for you. Good yeah, are you guys enjoying video. these little snippets? Let now, me know. Now, last thing I want to say about that. Yeah. The other side of the story is people say, well, I we missed the camaraderie of going on commenting. That applies out of the 1,500 or 2,000 or 3,000 people who end up watching this video. That applies to about 40 people. 100. Maybe 100, 100. maximum, okay? Because the rest of the people are watching on the, the video on the weekends, Japan, replay. China, <laughs> Timbuktu, at different time frames. And they're not on anyways. So we made a principal decision. We're going to give them, we'll try to give you a little bit better quality uh, on this stuff. And that's why we do it. But Esther says that she wants to go once a month live. live. At some point in time, we're going to do it, except not on Sunday. Sundays is a biggest yeah. viewing. So, so stay they, tuned. Yeah. So they got to stay tuned. Plus, we'll we have other live. stuff in, in mind for you, too. Don't worry about it. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video of you, me, and Cicely. Subscribe to this channel. Hit the like, and we'll see you on another video. We'll see you Sunday. Ciao. Sabanadiga. Ciao. Ciao.